Liu and uh, I'm a web developer at Autodesk in Shanghai, China. And uh, today I'll talk about JavaScript. Uh, there are many JavaScript frameworks uh, in recent years from AngularJS, React, Backbone, blah, blah, blah. And uh, more, uh, there will be more and more JavaScript script frameworks uh, in the future. I, I believe that. Many more uh, libraries. And uh, there's a book about uh, rewriting your front end every six weeks. Uh, uh, anyone di did this before? Uh, I, I, I tried several times, <laughs> two years ago. <laughs> and uh, I, I think the problem here is uh, many people think that uh, these client side frameworks, uh, they are easy to build features, but, uh, but they are also uh, introducing many uh, complexities uh, in our system. So uh, I think uh, many people uh, mix the idea uh, uh, of easy and simple. Actually, they are not the same. And uh, we we have in, uh, some news uh, like this: uh, Twitter migrated from client-side JavaScript framework back to server-ended content. And uh, 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 I think two years ago, uh, Shopify Shopify uh, deleted. Thousands of lines of JavaScript code to and um, to improve uh, developers' productivity. But they they think that uh, JavaScript codes uh, are hard to maintain, and uh, so uh, we are uh, as Rails developers. Uh, oh, let, let's see what Rails provide. Uh, Rails provides us. Uh, Rails provides us many things like uh, UJS, unobtrusive JavaScript, and uh, SJS, server ended JavaScript responses, action table, turbo links, asset pipelines, sprockets, and uh, with, with so many weapons in the box, we, we actually we can uh, achieve m most, mo most of the uh, things uh, uh, when we, when we tend to use a JavaScript framework uh, in most of the cases. Uh, from the simple uh, to-do and this example, uh, it's, uh, there, there are many JavaScript frameworks examples on this website, to-do MVC, and you, you can check out the code there. And uh, you actually you can build this app with a simple JavaScript with a Rails backend, and you can count the lines of code to compare the JavaScript frameworks uh, with, with simple Rails and JavaScript solution. And uh, you can also build uh, more complex uh, apps like, like this, uh, Basecamp, you see. So actually, with so many weapons here, we, we, can, we, can, build, we can build many, uh, many complex applications. So uh, the, the next time when you, when you meet a new JavaScript framework, you have to think, do you really need this? Uh, are, you, are you introducing unnecessary complexity to, to your colleagues or to yourself? Because maybe in the next year, you, you may be the one to rewrite, to rewrite your front-end client code. Okay, thank you. So start. Um, today I will be talking about helpers, decorators, exhibitors, and presenters. So we all know that Rails helpers are not all enough. All is object oriented, and we are all zealots. So when we look at the top, we don't like it. But when we look at the bottom line, oh, it looks really oh, oh that's good. <laughs> and oh, I'm a very, very superficial all zealot. So people make changes to make helpers more OO. First, we have a very famous draper gen. So on the top in a controller, you decorate the article you find. And then at the bottom, you can use the helper method directly on the object. And in the draper gen, you write your helper methods in a class called draper decorators. And as you can see, you have to specify uh, the helper to access the new context. But you can access 
directly the model attributes, which is convenient. And we also have a um, gem called Active Decorator. And it's very magical. It does everything for you. You don't even need to do any decoration. And you can just use it straight away. Inside the uh, decorator, you don't have to use the edge dot because it will um, redirect the call for you to the view context and also the model attributes. So uh, you don't have to think about anything. But I'm really hard to please, so I think this is too much magic. And I think if you override the active record, there will be many bugs. So the two gens, they were wrappers around the object, um, active record object. And often, when you use a wrapper, there are some problems. So I forked the gen, and I called it la 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 presenter. <laughs> and in the controller, you don't need to do any decoration, but in the view, you have the pres dot presenter dot link to access your helpers. And the pres dot presenter will give you a pure Ruby object, which will um, let you write your helper inside. And I don't like any magic, so you have to write dot edge dot. You have to write model dot. But I feel it's more safe and less box. So my view. The way I do it is to have the active record object access a presenter, which is not wrapping around the object. So I think it's safer. <laughs> and I think it's also good, so even though you have to type more words, but it gives you an awareness that you are using something from the presenter side instead of the model side. And you won't forget to um, wrap something in a controller, because you always do it in a view. My name is Mark, and I go by the name La La La, and you can find me on Twitter and GitHub. Thanks. Hi, uh, my name is uh, Hua Qingwei, and my English name is Charlie Hua, and I work at uh, Coffee, and I'll introduce the company later. And my topic is uh, why you guys should eat healthier and how. Don't laugh. <laughs> Serious. Okay, I want to do a quick survey. <coughs> Okay, uh, how many of you know roughly about how many calories you need to take every day? Wow, wow, wow. Okay, okay. Mm, not surprised. Okay. Okay, and the second, second one is, is more, more difficult. How many uh, fruits, veggies, grains, portions, you know? Wow. We, we can talk later. Yes, yeah. Okay, okay. Not, not surprised at all. Okay. First is, uh, first are, uh, we know a lot about the software, our stuff. Yeah, we do. Yeah. When it comes to our, ourselves, our body, no, I don't know. You know, yeah. We don't know how to make it work better. And, and here's my, I want to share my, my, my target. It's about yeah, uh, 1,800 and this portion is uh, uh, generated from our uh, software. And uh, if you, uh, you, you check your diet every day, it's very possible that you have uh, not enough good stuff and too much bad stuff. Yeah. You guess why, 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 uh, what, what it has to do with you. Yeah. And here I want to share some confidential information about uh, software de development and food. Okay. So ensure that your code is what you eat. What does that mean? Do you know a GI, GI value of food? If you don't know, Google it. And uh, for example, high GI food like a Coke, donuts, which I've had a lot. Yeah. And low GI food like oatmeal bars, not so yummy. Yeah. And uh, the fact is that it uh, affects your body sugar, blood sugar level. And yeah, in, in half an hour, you feel like you are Superman, you can do everything. But one hour later, <laughs> you just want to sleep. So that's why your test coverage goes down. <laughs> it's not good for your company. It's not good for your customers. Yeah, it's a real life example. <laughs> Hot photos. Yeah, that's so familiar. Okay, basically you can uh, drink a lot of water with, with the food. 
for uh, some protein or fiber. Yeah. And uh, as for short term, for the mid term, I think uh, we want to keep our, ourselves in the, in the zone now. We, have, we can have a very high performance. <coughs> but if you have a bad diet, you're already in, in, the, in the red zone, and you're very close to burnout. You keep your body and your mind in the uh, stress uh, status. So you don't have the buffer. And when you, uh, if your company is uh, getting, getting busier, and you don't have the, the strength, you don't have the <coughs> energy to, to deal with that. In the long run, really, I, I don't that and I, I, I freaked out. So, so oh, serious disease can be uh, caused by, by diet, diet problems. And <coughs> the bottom line is that, is that we are not only developers. We are also children. We are also parents. We are also partners, life partners. Yeah. So we have a lot of uh, responsibility. And then, and then you think I'm scaring you. Yeah. But I'm not. Here's a living example. Kai Fu Li, I think a lot of people know. Uh, him is a, a role model for a lot of young folks. And he is just, uh, I think uh, two, two or three years ago, diagnosed uh, with cancer. So he's now giving advice about how health. My time is running out, so I've got a clue. <coughs> okay. First, uh, our company, what, what we do, we connect you with the dietitians. We have two kinds. One is a one day analysis. The other is a 60-day transformation program. You can just take picture of your food, and the dietitian will calculate uh, the everything for you and give you advice. And here's a, like, a, a report card for your one-day analysis. And it's like a, a case study of an engineer before and after. We just switch some meat and, and add more foods, fibers. And here's the difference, 400 calories. Less and more balanced diet. Yes. And sometimes I think oh, we are asking the wrong questions. It's not about eating health. Eating healthy is about eating normally. Okay. And we just want to shift. And okay, let's go, go, go down to the free offer for our company. We want to offer a free one day analysis for every one of you. Just write me an email. And we have a discount for any company who wants to buy six day program for your employees. Yeah, and we are hiring. So please contact me. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Ms. Dai. I work at the uh, Growth School. Today, I will talk about uh, red potion. Uh, what is red potion? Basically, red potion is like uh, rails on ruby motion. You probably will hear about uh, ruby motion, but you won't use it. Why? Because like if you use Ruby motion and you create a new app, you just pop out this syntax. Just like you use Ruby to write object C. So we will, we will feel this is so disgusting. Why will I use Ruby motion instead of Swift? So, but things change. So uh, today the, I will introduce the red portion. What is the red portion? So this is the red portion, hello world. This is uh, red portions. Uh, Hello world screen. You, you can see the syntax. It's pretty like real fish. So you can like this is kind of like Ruby. This is Ruby, not of JC. Okay. Uh, red portion is like a boilerplate of a Ruby motion. You can think a, a type of framework on the Ruby motion. So what it can, the red portion can offer is like reasonable syntax and uh, some handy build engine and uh, very much realish. So if you like Ruby on Rails, probably you will feel, feel very comfortable on writing the red portion. Okay, so what is building promo uh, promotion? Uh, what is building red promotion? Uh, they, uh, prom red portion include like three or four major gyms. One is called promotion. Promotion is like a screen template. So promotion provos, uh, uh, provides uh, several several uh, useful uh, screens like uh, table screens, navigation, table bus. So you can like write a screen like this. So if I want to write a table cell, so I can just dump a red and render it. So it's very easy to write a table screen. And uh, the second one demo is this is a login screen. So I can just configure the 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 field, and then just render it. This is just this is the sign-in sign screen. So it's very easy 
to write uh, iOS apps. App, uh, iOS apps. And second, the second feature that building engine is uh, CDQ. CDQ is a core data query. CD core data is like like data database in the iOS. So it's kind of like acting writer for the core data. For example, uh, this is my like demo application. It's kind of like shopping cart. So how do I implement this shopping cart? Basically, I define a, a, a stuff like active records model. Then it has a migration like. A, you can configure the field and also have the syntax, very active record. You can also have like a name scope, so it's very disgusting. <laughs> and uh, the third one is like RMQ. RMQ is like a Ruby motion query. What is Ruby motion query? Basically, it provides the syntax. It, you can imagine you are using the jQuery. You can just find a DOM and override it, do it whatever you want. So it's very, very powerful. And RMQ also provides style sheet. For example, like this, this is like uh, product list. So I just configure the, the array, then I write style sheet. So it's holy crap. <laughs> and uh, the next, uh, this one is like AF motion. AF motion is kind uh, Ruby wrapper, uh, Ruby motion wrapper for FM ne networking. So you can like call API like this, maybe like the, the HTTP client we use, use in Ruby on Rails. So this is science. So I use the Ruby, uh, I use F motion, just like implement the science. And there are also a uh, uh, call uh, motion authentication. So you can implement device login very, very quickly. So I, I build this demo application. Guess how, how, how many hours I spent? So I build this with no objects and see the tech background, and I only spend then in less ten hours. So uh, the last week, a journalist uh, interviewed me, and, and I, I just coincidentally building this application. So he asked me, "When do you start learning this, and how much how many hours you spend?" I said, "I just learned yesterday, and I spent then in less hours." So that's much more uh, June. So welcome to join this community. It's a lot of fun of building this. If you want to learn OS, iOS APP building, but always fail, welcome to try this. And uh, I will open a free workshop in the next month. So if you want to learn this, and uh, you can like join the waitlist. Okay, thank you. Hi, my name is Bruce. Uh, today I'll talk about the uh, how we resolve it and like uh, lock issue between API team and, and client teams. So uh, this is uh, how we will work, is that uh, we want a new feature and uh, we implement the API and code review and QA and deploy. Then three app teams start working on the, the client part. The point is that sometimes the API design change because the feedback from uh, from app teams, then you need to do this role again. And this is fine if if uh, your backend your API team the uh, sprint is always sprint is always one or two ahead. But usually sometimes it's not the case. Then this is like uh, then uh, this is uh, so there are few. There are a few uh, solutions, options, like uh, API Blueprint and IAML. And the way they solve it is that uh, you write a documentation in a certain format. And uh, for example, uh, this is the, uh, the HTTP action and the example, uh, example request and the example result. And, uh, they provide an API mark, you can code. But the problem is that the file is like maybe even 10,000 lines, maintain that is like this. So, and also the, the, the other problem is that sometimes you have the very specific behavior you want to test. For example, you want to test uh, uh, like uh, validations for the user input. So uh, we end up finding from this uh, website that you can use. You can upload uh, an API blueprint document or SWOT or even IML to 
uh, to uh, as the starting point. So, so this is how it looks like. Then I have a demo app with two API endpoints, and you can get these beautiful endpoints. You can send to Actinza, okay, so you can start working on with this API mark, and and this is the code. It's actually JavaScript. They say, okay, this is respond uh, 200 OK and render this page. And it, uh, it's a liquid template. And another issue is that sometimes uh, it is working well until a day that uh, uh, the uh, app guy can me say, hey, Bruce, uh, we want to issue the final release candidate today. Could you give us the final API endpoint? Um, the problem is that we have we have the API mark endpoint, but we don't have a real one. So how? Uh, OK. Uh, if just forward the, the API request to the API mark. So, So the, uh, so basically, you just call to a, a, a proxy service, then uh, forward everything to it, and the implementation is actually just forward the, the request use the HTTP library. Finally, a advertisement. I wrote a gem. To uh, to beautifyize your uh, Rails console. So, for example, uh, this is the how it looks like in, in a hash. User .o. You can even render a table. So, just just three steps. You can get all all of this. So. Yep, I'm from RSB and we are hiring located in Singapore. And uh, this, uh, the blog version will be coming out soon. Uh, please uh, follow, uh, please subscribe. And, okay. So, uh, I would also like to hear uh, how do you think about this talk. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. So my talk is uh, continuous updates. So does anyone know what does this five mean? It means I have five minutes. And also, uh, we run a conference in Singapore in June. It's called Radar RubyConf. And uh, I have a story to say because I saw a golfer's talk about uh, CS education and the panel uh, this uh, morning. Uh, I got into IT because uh, I was so into basketball when I was young, and Michael Jordan said, oh, just do IT, and then I do IT. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm Juanito uh, Fatas from Taiwan, and I work for Joby Group Co. I also uh, maintain Ruby language website and Rails guide. And so anyone knows this website, right? It's called RubyGens. It's a website you install uh, your dependency. And bundle is the tool that you use to manage your dependency. So you can bundle install, and you will create a gem file and gem file the lock. So your uh, dependency will be automatically resolved. But there is another command called bundle update, which will update your project dependencies. And so how, how often do you update your project? Uh, OK, so maybe once a week or once a month. But everyone will say, uh, just I will update later. But later actually equals never. So, <laughs> so uh, my boss, he said that uh, continuous update is a practice of updating all dependency uh, several times a month. And so there are a lot of benefits to uh, do continuous update. Uh, first, you have the incremental improvements from new gems. And it may fix your security vulnerabilities and reduce your technical debt and make future upgrade easier. And developer does not like legacies. 
and maintainer love to hear new uh, bug reports from new gen release. So, and you can also learn stuff from every gen update and ship latest software. So, sounds good, but how do we do it? So, the many solutions like this, you uh, bundle update and you commit push and open a pull request, but it, it may take you about 10 minutes, and 10 minutes you can use the money to buy all the food. Why do it yourself? So from idea to a script, I wrote a script, but this is also not good. So there are notification services like a Genesian, libraries.io, but the thing is they only tell you, but they don't, you still have to do the work. And so it's still not automatic. So we build the services fully automatic. It's called uh, Debot. So, so how does Debot work? You will bundle update your project, and it works like this. You will send you a pull request, and with uh, uh, every update dependency, you will show you a link and compare view. Compare view is something look like this. So uh, also the change log. So you can now uh, these two versions first being updated. Also, it will tell you how much time uh, it saves for you, so you have a better idea of uh, how this update uh, saves time for you. Also, we can do an automatic security update. Security update is uh, also we will send you a pull request, and it will fix your chain that has a vulnerability that uh, we noticed from lubisec.com. So, uh, Rails may have a vulnerability, and it has uh, solutions, but so many solutions, which one you should choose? Don't worry, I already got you covered. I know the algorithm, even though I didn't have a CS degree, but I still can <laughs> know the algorithm to fix your <laughs> vulnerability. <laughs> so, Debug is your active support. We, we don't tell you, we do it for you. And so far, we have sent uh, 5,000 pull requests and saved uh, like 400 hours. And so I hope everyone can uh, update early, update often, do the continuous update. So hopefully we can make Ruby great again. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, I'd actually uh, I'd like to address a very serious topic, if I could, with all of you. This is very important to me. Um, I believe it should be important to you as well. Um, I've noticed uh, during my time here, uh, not just in Taiwan, but here uh, for the last day with all of you, that uh, there's a serious uh, lack of proper greeting between us all. Uh, I feel that uh, the current uh, state of affairs is that I must address this today for you. Now, uh, as I see it, there's this issue that, that needs to be addressed with the way in which we high-five one another. I feel that the high-five model is, in fact, not good enough and some of you end up with a situation kind of like this. Um, I've approached you with the high five, and in fact, it ends up in just total and utter defeat. So for all of you today, oh, sad, sad panda. Um, so for all of you today, I would like to teach you all the proper method, method of giving an amazing and stellar high five. Um, so the first thing I'd like all of you to do is to identify a partner, yeah, somebody sitting to your right or to your left, if you do not know the person sitting to your right or to your left, you will introduce yourself to the person sitting to your right or your left. Please do that now. I will give you two seconds. Okay, very good. Now you're going to need to put your laptop away and stand up, if you could. So please stand up. Please stand up. Stand up. Okay, uh, I, I will need a partner. If you don't mind, I will need a partner. Okay. All right. First and foremost, I need you all to be mentally prepared for uh, such an event. So I want you all to close your eyes very briefly. Close your eyes and visualize yourself greeting the person next to you. You will greet them with amazing energy and excitement. Okay. All right. The, the way in which you do a stellar high five starts with this. First thing, I want you to face your partner. You will face your partner straight on. You will take your arm at a 90-degree angle. You will make sure you're exactly 90 degrees from such partner. Now, don't go too far. Listen to instructions. This is very important. <laughs> the next thing you'll do is you will lower your arm. You will look partner in the eye. You will give them deep gaze and look of excitement. You will place arm back. You will.
focus on their elbow. Focus on their elbow and slap with gloriousness. Now you will turn to a partner to your other side and you will do this one more time. One more time to the person to your other side. Remember, focus on the elbow. All right, thank you very much. I uh, hope you all learned something here today. Actually, I will leave you this one last thing, and that's this. Uh, if uh, my company decided to build this app that actually allows you to give a Twitter Stellar High Five to somebody else, if you go to StellarHighFive.com, you put in Twitter handle, your Twitter handle, and you send them a message, uh, you can do that at any point. The app is live now, and it is for your taking. Um, also, I have a very, very small sum of these stickers. Um, if you exchange a Stellar High Five with me, and I have some left, Yours. Okay, thank you.